Let's pray together. God, we just thank you for this time that we can come and fellowship and uh, just be in your presence. Thank you for your word. I thank you that we can turn to your word, the Bible, and we can get the answers that we're looking for. We can find hope. We can find peace. We can be comforted. We can be encouraged. And so, God, I just pray tonight that as we open up your word, that you would speak to us and you would show us who you are, God, and show us a new picture of you that we maybe haven't seen before. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, ladies. How are you? Um, Well, I'm going to be doing, uh, this is the first week of a four-week series on renewing your mind, and I thought the best place to start talking about renewing your mind is to figure out what needs to be renewed in our minds. How's that sound? (laughs) We'll start there. We'll start with what do we need God to come into and what do we need him to change about what, how we think and how we see ourselves and what he's doing. And, uh, so we're going to start there. Um, when my, I saw, I, I, I'm going to start with just a little story about our family and some things that we did when our children were young. We started something called highs and lows. Has anyone ever done that? You go around the dinner table and you do highs and lows, or some people call them guns and roses. Um, there's lots of different funny terms for it. But basically, you want your family to open up about their day and share. And if you've never done that, I encourage you to do that. Do it with a group of friends. Um, but when our kids were little, we, would, we started this, you know, what was the high part of your day? What was the low part of your day? And I mean, they were like six, seven, and eight when we started this. And then as they grew, you know, it, the, the highs got more exciting and the lows got harder, you know, more heartbreaking and more um, challenging. And, uh, and then as they even got busier, teenagers and that sort of thing, it turned into instead of our nightly dinner, it was like a few times a week. And then it was Sunday lunch because that was one of the only times we were all home and could all connect together. And I know, as I was thinking about this, I noticed that as our family grew with like our table grew on Sunday dinners, which we still do now, and now my kids are married and they have grandkids, and so it's a little bit crazy. We haven't even done this for a while. Um, but as our family grew and they're with new family members and their friends, and you know, there's like 12 people at our table, we didn't have time for 12 people to share their highs and lows. So we just skipped the lows. We just went straight to the highs. We're like, everybody give your high. What was your high for the week? And so we'd go around and and we'd share those. And what we realized is, you know, when you come together, when our kids were sharing their highs and lows, they could not wait to tell us their exciting thing that happened that day. They knew they were going to get the greatest cheers and high fives and at a boy, at a girl from their family. And they knew that when they shared their struggles or their lows, that they would get the most empathy and the biggest support and encouragement from their family. And so it was interesting to me, I realized it's a little ironic that as our family pace quickened, as our life pace got busier, we just stopped sharing the hard stuff. We stopped talking about what our challenges were. We didn't, and when we did that, we stopped really getting that encouragement and that empathy and that prayer that we, we need. Um, those challenges were still happening, but we were like, we don't have time for that. We only have time for the highs. So let's get the highlight reel, which kind of sounds like social media right now. It's like you get all the highs, but you don't really see the lows. So what I, I, I recognized in kind of re- revisiting this uh, little practice that we did and what happened over that, that time period when we stopped talking about the lows is that we, we don't get the full picture when we just look at the highs. We don't see everything that's going on. And you may, you may be thinking, Kristen, if, you, if I looked at the lows, that would be all I'm looking at. I'm trying to, look, I'm trying to find a high, and I'm, I'm not, like, I got too much stuff going on in my life that, that is hard. Um, and I understand that. I get that. Um, 
But what I'm learning is that the connections that happen when we only share the highs don't produce the depth that we need to see God. It, it, we have these shallow experiences that can lead to emotional lows when you don't feel supported and you don't feel like you have a tribe of people that are going to be with you and they're going to pray with you and, and help you get through that. Um, and maybe, maybe sharing those lows with each other and really feeling supported is what we need to see the full picture of God and who he is. Um, many of you know that I went on a two-week trip almost a year ago to Israel, and it was like the highest high of my life. I mean, I've had some highs, but recent. It was unbelievable. I, I couldn't, be, I just was like, wow, God, it, you just planned the perfect trip for me. I can't believe it. And then I came home, and I experienced about five months of low after low after low. And when I described it, it was like hit after hit after hit. Can anyone relate? So here I was, I was like, gosh, I just felt like I was on this spiritual retreat with God in this amazing experience. And I came home and it was like the bottom fell out in every area of my life, ministry, work, family, friends, you name it. It was just hit after hit after hit. And what I found myself doing in this is going, and I'm sure none of you can relate. If you can, you know, give me a, a, a shout out. But I, I would take a hit from something and I'd be like, okay, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm fine, I'm good. Anybody do that? <laughs> you know, it's like, if I, say I'm fine, then I will be fine. And then something else happens and you take the hit and you kind of have to catch your breath and you're like, okay, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm okay. That's, and I even had people come to me and say, hey, I'm, I'm really sorry that I did that. And I'd be like, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm good. That didn't hurt. Meanwhile, you know, my arm is bleeding and I'm limping around, but I was just, I'm going to be fine. I can be fine. I'm tough. I can take it. This is not that hard. And, and literally, it was like one after another, after another, after another, after another. And finally, I, I said, you know what? I don't think God is going to let me be fine. I think that's kind of the point, is that I keep saying I'm fine. And he's trying to do something, not that he's causing all these things, but he wants to use all these things, and I keep saying, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm okay. And he's going, Kristen, stop. You're missing the point. You're missing the point. So I was so focused on trying to make everything stop that it was like I, I, I didn't even look for God. I just was focused on being okay and being fine and, and getting rid of the pain, and maybe you can relate. Maybe you have a tough situation that you're dealing with right now and you're trying to be fine, or maybe it's something that's ongoing in your life and you're, you're just like, that's just the way it is, and I just have learned to kind of build up a callus so that I don't feel that pain anymore. And, or maybe you've had an experience like me where it's like hit after hit after hit after hit, and finally you go, okay, God, I, I think you're trying to tell me something. I think I need to learn something here. I think you want to use this somehow in my life. And, um, but whatever it is, I do believe that the enemy wants us to try to avoid pain, get out of it as fast as we can so that we never get to the part where we understand that God wants to use this for our good that he's trying to work something in us. So Romans 12.2 on your handout says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you from the inside out into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. 
So let's go back to that. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. We got to figure out what we're thinking. We got to understand what are the lows. And when we're saying, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm okay, we're denying those lo- what those lows are, what that pain really is. And so we're taking away the opportunity for God to do a work in us that will transform our minds and change the way we think. So how do we share it? How do we open up? I know you've, you've come to group for the first time, you're at Beautiful, and you're like, I don't want to open up and share my deep, dark secrets. I don't want to tell everybody what's really going on in my life. I want to make, I want to, I want to be the person who's up. I want to be the positive. I want to share good things. I don't want to focus on, you know, what's hard. How do you do that without being, you know, bringing everyone else down? It's, that's a challenge, you know, especially when you come into a room full of women and you're like, you've just been on social media and seeing everyone's highs for the day. It's hard to come in and go, I feel like I can be supported. And, um, but realizing what, what, what do I need God to do in me? What does God want me to face or admit? And what does he want to do in me causes us to be honest about where we are. And that's your full, your first blank to fill in. Be honest about where you are. All the significant growth in my life started with me being honest about myself and God. If I look back over the challenges and the and the good times, all of it, it's it's being honest with God about what's good and where I'm at, and it's being honest with God about what's hard and where I'm disappointed. I remember saying to God one time when I was going through a very deep sorrow. Are you there, God? And I felt the Holy Spirit respond to me, yes. And my response back was, I'm not talking to you right now. Like, I'm glad you're there, but I'm not talking to you. And I, I experienced God leading me into a place where I would talk to him again. But we don't get that unless we're honest about where we are. He can handle that frustration, our anger, our sorrow, our celebrations. He can handle all of it. He has time for the highs and the lows, and it doesn't matter how many people are at the table. He will be there all day to listen to all of it and to celebrate and, and cheer us on and keep us running and to pick us up and bandage our wounds and encourage us, and give us direction. He can handle all of it. Uh, The lows that I went through last year were a catalyst and helped me to understand and experience a mind change. Because at the end of that season, nothing changed in my situation but me. God changed my mind. He changed the way I saw things. He changed the way I showed up to things. I mean, I was going into situations with this thing on me, this depression and anxiety about what I had gone through and what this particular, you know, situation had caused me, and and it had affected me. It changed how I interacted with people. It changed how I participated. But when I let God in and I started to let him change the way I thought and change the way I saw myself and saw him... I showed up differently. None of, nobody in that meeting changed. Nothing about it changed, but I came in different. And as a result, I left different. So when we, when we allow him in, he changes all of that without ever... Sometimes our circumstances change. Sometimes there's a different outcome, but you know what? We're not in control of the outcomes. We are only in control of what we choose to think on and act on. That is the only thing we're in control of. We cannot control the outcomes. We cannot control what ifs. We cannot control, and we're going to talk about all of that in the next few weeks. So when I was in the I'm fine, I thought that saying I'm fine would produce I'm fine, and we all know that didn't work. Um, 
Instead, it, it, like I said, it produced um, anxiety and depression. And I let the enemy have a heyday in my head and, and it, all during that season. I mean, it was a long season. But we have hope, right, ladies? We can look to Jesus and for everything. Everything that we're going through, everything that we are feeling, we can go to the Bible and look at what Jesus did and we can follow in his footstep. He models what to do in these tough situations. So right before Jesus was betrayed and taken to be crucified, this is kind of what's the scene. He's been with the disciples and he's feeling the weight of what he's about to go into. It's starting to bring him to a place of deep sorrow. And so in Matthew verse 26 or chapter 26 verse 36 through 39, it says then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, "Sit here while I go over, go over there and pray." He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. Have you ever felt that way? He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And then he went on a little little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. So Jesus is is showing us, it's right here in, in the Bible, that he experienced grief and sorrow and anguish to the point of death. He asked his friends, come with me, pray with me. By the way, side note, they fell asleep. (laughs) But he still, you know, then he went back. He's like, hey, wake up. I need you to be praying with me. And they fell asleep again. But I'm sure they started off praying for him. So he experienced all of this. He grabbed his closest friends and he went to God. Do you have that? Are you able to grab your closest friends and go to God? Are we going to God with that? Are we getting alone with him? He broke away from the expectations of everyone else and he spent time with his father. That's what he is modeling for us. He's saying, I'm inviting you to follow me. In the good, in the bad, in the tough, in the, in the highs and the lows, get alone with God. Spend time with him. When we ask God to fix the hard stuff, he shows us what he can do with the hard stuff. And I don't know about you, but for me, I can't see that when I'm in the hard stuff. I have a hard time seeing how God's going to actually use this. Like, we just, just went through a really, really devastating loss. And a lot of you know Joyce Kelly. And, you know, Ron passed away a, couple, a few weeks ago. I think it's been three weeks. And we're in that going, we're not seeing how you're going to use any of this. But God is faithful, and when we give him all of it, he does what we could not even imagine with our human minds because he is not human. He is God. He is sovereign. He has resources we can never imagine. He has ways of going above and beyond what we think is possible. So I don't know how you approach those things, but I, I want him, now that I've had a few of those experiences, I want him to change me. I want him to change my mind. How many of you have tried to renew your own mind? You're like, let me try to do this. Let me try to fix it. Let me try to, it, it's not really possible. We can only go so far in our own resources. We need him to come in and renew our minds and change how we think, and change how we see so that we really are experiencing the life that Jesus paid for when he died on the cross, where he says, I have come to give you life and life abundantly. So when we 
are honest and we do get alone with him and we ask him to deal with us, he takes us by the hand and he leads us out. When I was in my closet saying, are you here, God? Because this whole situation doesn't feel like you've been here. And when I heard the Holy Spirit respond in my spirit, I'm here. And I said, I'm not talking to you. He took me by the hand and led me out of that. And now when I think back on that time, I recognize what God did in my heart. I don't think about, the first thing I think about is not the, the loss that I went through. The first thing I think about is the transformation that God brought to my mind and my heart through it. First, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful God and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. When we have a foundation that is built on God, we are going to go through tough things. We all know that. But we are going to have a deep well to draw from that we cannot dig on our own. We can't dig it. We, we don't know the right places. We don't know where the water is. But God comes in and he, through each of these experiences, he digs that well so that when we're going through something, we're drawing from this well of water and strength that we did not even realize we had. I was sitting with Joyce today and we were talking about tonight and, t and, and this teaching and you know, I, we were reflecting on the journey, and I told her, she's coming back. She's going to be back here in five weeks teaching. I'm like, Joyce, I, how do you do that? How do you do that? But then we were talking about the whole journey of, of walking with her and how I witnessed her ministering to her family and to Ron's family in the midst of some of the hardest days of this journey. And I literally, I'm sitting there think, looking at her going, who are you? But she is that because she has a deep well, because she has a foundation that is not going to shake. It's like the, 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 what she's standing on keeps her feet firm. What we get to stand on keeps our feet firm. And when things happen and the top gets a little wobbly and you're like, God, where are you? I don't know if you're here. This doesn't move. Our feet don't move. We're not shaken. We might be blown a little and, and sway a little in our hearts and in our minds, but our foundation doesn't ever move. And that's what God does when he renews our mind and he changes the way we think. Sometimes we get stuck in one or the other, like, everything's great. I'm just going to pretend everything's great all the time and wonderful. Or we get stuck in nothing's great and everything's hard. And, and that's not good either. Neither one are the full picture. And I, was, I believe and know and have experienced that when we are in relationship with others, walking along this journey that we're on, we see the full picture. You bring it out in me, I bring it out in you. That's the only way we see the full picture. We can't see all of it on our own. God doesn't reveal all of it when we're just solo. He reveals it to us through others. Can you imagine what would happen if this was a place that, that we were honest about where we're at with God. Can you imagine if we opened up, if like, if you opened up to the ladies at your table tonight and you share the things that, that are the lows, we talk about the highs, we're going to have an opportunity to share our highs and our lows. And you felt supported. And ladies, if you're the one hearing, can you imagine if you didn't try to fix it? 
Can you imagine if you didn't say, well, let me tell you how that all worked out in my life. Because let me tell you, when you're in it, you don't want to hear that. Can I get an amen? You do not want to, you're pouring your heart out. You're saying, this is what my kid is doing, or this is what happened at work, or whatever. And they go, well, let me tell you how it worked out in my life. And you just literally want to go, whatever. Like, I don't want to hear that. I mean, that, that's, I don't, I, maybe that's just me. <laughs> it, we, there's a time for that. But can you imagine if, if instead you said to that person and you heard this, I'm so sorry that you're going through that. And I am going to commit to pray that you are going to see God through this situation, that you're going to feel his presence in a way that you have never felt him before, that you're going to watch him meet your needs like you never thought possible. That's what I'm going to pray for you. Can you imagine if we did that for each other? Instead of trying to fix each other or one-up each other or just encourage each other out of the hard thing that we actually said, I'm going to go with you to God like Jesus brought the disciples. I'm going to go with you and I'm going to pray with you. And we're going to watch this happen together. Can you imagine if we did that? I know that when we do that, God's going to answer. He's going to show up, and he's going to change the way we think, and he's going to transform us, and it's going to be amazing. And we're not going to be stuck in the lows, and we're going to be, we're going to be going, okay, ladies, this is what happened today, but this is what I'm seeing God do. This is what I'm experiencing, and this is what I'm praying for. Will you pray with me? And we'll be saying, yes, yes, yes. So tonight, we have an opportunity to do something for someone else, which I missed the last point. I'm sorry. The last point is look up and out. That is the point of look up, look out, see who's around you, grab your closest, and go to God. And if you don't have them, make them here. These are my closest people. We're going to go to God together. So we did the letter writing um, exercise um, at the beautiful conference where we wrote a letter to one of three different people who were nominated through the world needs more, more love letters.com, which is Hannah Bruncher's um, organization. And we have over a thousand letters to send to these people that nominated them for a letter bundle. So if you weren't there, a letter bundle is like 300 letters. So this person that they nominate gets a huge bundle of letters. So if you turn the letter writing uh, sheet over, you will see who our nomination, our nominee is. And I just want to explain why we're doing this here. So we have someone on our staff who is um, engaged to be married. And she came to me after the conference and said, I want to nominate my future mother-in-law, but I don't think I have time. Because she is battling with stage four breast cancer, and they're not sure how long she's going to be on this earth. What can we do? And I said, we'll do it. We're going to look up and look out tonight. We're going to be an encouragement, and in our encouraging someone else, we're going to be lifted. So we're going to do that before, when, as, during your, ta your discussion. There's letter writing tips. One of the best things that Hannah talked about when she shared this is that it doesn't have to look pretty. Like if you mess up and you need to scratch something out, that's okay. And I was hung up on that. I, whenever I write a card or a letter or anything, if I mess up, I have to start all over, which is such a pain because then you have to, like, copy all the good words you said, wrote and then, you know, try not to make a mistake again. Otherwise, you got to start over. I mean, I have, you know, eight cards and eight envelopes, and I only get to send out four notes because I have to start over all the time. So that was one thing she said is just go with your mistakes, scratch it out, keep going, and 
be that encouragement for Mary tonight. And so we're doing it tonight on our campus, and then all the campuses are going to see this next week, high campuses, and they're going to do it too. And so we're going to be able to present this letter bundle to um, Anna, who is nominating her mother, her future mother-in-law. Isn't that awesome? So let's pray. God, I just thank you for these ladies, and I pray that as we write these words to Mary, God, that your Holy Spirit would lead us, that you would let your anointing rise up in us to bring words of encouragement and scripture and whatever you're putting on our hearts to share. And Lord, we do pray for this situation. We pray for Mary. We pray for her healing. We pray for comfort for her family. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be very present in every part of their lives, God, that you would reveal yourself in ways that they have not known and that you would comfort and, and use all of this for their good and for your glory. I pray for the ladies. I pray for the discussion at the table and for the time that we're going to have spent with you this week, Jesus, that you would meet us right where we're at and you would gently lead us out. In Jesus' name, amen.